Today I want to talk about the remove and remove child methods. So these are DOM methods that allow you to remove content from your web page. And I want to talk about different ways that you can implement them and what the differences are between these two methods. Okay, so I've built a page just meant to reflect something semi-real world. I've got a main element with a series of paragraphs. Each of the paragraphs have the same class name. And then there is a span inside the paragraph. Now, the content of the span doesn't matter for this example. I've got it here because when you're building content, you've often got these inline elements, anchors and spans and uh, mark and things like that embedded inside of block elements like paragraphs. And a user could click on the paragraph, but it's also possible that they could click on the text that's inside of these inline elements. And when they do that, you need to know which paragraph that was inside of. Now, best practice is we don't want to actually add a click listener on every one of these paragraphs. We're going to add the click listener on a parent element, the main element. And that way, I've got this entire area as one click listener. So I'm only using the resources required for one single click listener. And the fact that in JavaScript, the events will bubble up, it doesn't matter where they click. So if I click on this word, the event's going to click, or the, uh, the click event is going to start here, and it's going to bubble up through the paragraph to the main element. If I clicked here inside of the span, it's going to bubble from the span to the paragraph to the main element. So as long as I'm clicking on one of these child elements, it will get to the main element. So that's what we're going to do in our script here. Listening for DOM content loaded that happens and I'm adding the click listener only to the main element so there's only one th click listener on the whole page I'm saving a lot of system resources by making one click listener instead of one for every paragraph now my function that gets called remove para the event object gets passed in and I've got two different properties on that event there's target and current target the difference between the two of them target that's the first thing that the user clicked on. So it could have been the paragraph, it could have been the span, or it could be the spaces between the paragraphs. So maybe it's the main element itself. If I come up here and we look at the CSS, we can see paragraphs, padding, top and bottom, there's none. Left and right, there's two REMs worth of padding. So my phone size 20 pixels, so I've got 40 pixels of padding on the left and right. Margin, I use margin between the paragraphs because that's gonna overlap. It means I'm not going to have one on the top and on the bottom creating two REMs or creating 40 pixels of space between the paragraphs. I only want 20, so the browser will overlap that margin, giving me just 20 pixels. However, margin is outside of the paragraph. When I click on the margin area, the click is actually going to go to the main element. It's not going to be considered clicking on the paragraph it's going to go past that and right up to the main element. Okay, so back down here, target the thing that's clicked. So it could be the main element, the paragraph, or the span. It could be any of those things. Current target, that's the thing that owns the listener. Here, main is the thing that has the click listener added to it. So current target, regardless of where you click, current target is always going to be main. So. How do we use these things and these two methods, remove and remove child? So main, that's my current target. That is the main element, always. And I've got another variable here, p, which I want to represent the paragraph. So ev.target, that's the thing that was clicked. If we say it was the span or the paragraph, great. The closest, this method, what it does is it looks at the HTML, if I clicked in here, inside the span, it says, find the closest thing to me as you bubble up that has the class para. That's what this is doing down here. So it goes up, hey, there's a paragraph right here with this class, so this paragraph will be what gets returned by this method and goes into my variable. If I click right on the text itself, I'm clicking on the paragraph, find the closest, well, that's me. I have the class para, but if I'm clicking here in between if i'm clicking on the main element then it's never going to find this it's going to bubble up through all the html 
from the span to the paragraph to the main element. If the main element is the thing that I clicked on, it doesn't have the class para. Its parent is the body. So as long as the body doesn't have the class para, which why would it, then I know that I'm not going to get anything coming back from this closest method. So P is going to be null. There was nothing that matched that class name if you click on the main element. So we need to be sure that we're getting a paragraph. Now I can write this, I can say if P, so if it's not undefined, if it's not null, then I know that I have a paragraph and I can say P.remove. And this method will remove the paragraph itself. So if I jump into the browser here, here's all my paragraphs. If I click on the paragraph itself, boom, gone. If I click on the span, the spans are bold text here. If I click on the span, it still works. It removes that paragraph. But if I click in between on the main, and you can see in the console here, the target and current target are both the main element. So if I'm clicking in between, I'm not getting a paragraph, so nothing gets removed. But I click on the paragraph, I click on the span, it always works. Okay, so that's the remove method. We're saying whatever this element is, remove it. Great. Another way we can write this, so I'm just going to comment this out temporarily. The latest version of JavaScript, and if you're using version, uh, I think it's 80 and up or 81 and up of Chrome, then you have optional chaining available. And we can shorten this to be this. So I'm checking to see, hey, is there something in paragraph? If there is, I want to call its remove method just like that. So it's going to work the exact same way as this. Click on the paragraph, click on the span, click in between, nothing happens, but it still works. And that's the optional chaining. I have another video. The link to that is down in the description for you. Okay, so that's the remove method. If you've got the element, you want to remove it, great. For the remove child method, which is the other one for this video, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, I've got a main element and I'm going to give you the thing inside of that that I want to remove. So sometimes we want to say main dot remove child. Inside of me, there is a paragraph or some sort of element in this variable. That's the thing that I want to remove. Now I can run this, click on the paragraph, click on the span. It's going to work. But if I click in between, I'm going to get an error because I wasn't checking for if P. So I have to do the same thing here either way, just like that. Or if you want to do this with optional chaining the same way, we can say P, if it exists, if there is something, get me my parent element. Because if it exists, that means it's the span or the paragraph that we were clicking on. So the closest did find the paragraph. So if this variable is not null or undefined, we're going to have a parent element. What's the parent element? Well, it's the main. And if the main exists, if we got to the main, now I can call remove child. So here's the same thing. And at this point, I don't have to do optional chaining because I already tested it right here to see if it existed. And if it did, the rest of this command. So we're saying, Hey, you clicked on this, this span, we got the paragraph. This is the thing that's inside of that variable P. Okay. It exists. So find my parent element. That's the main element, main element, remove child P. So that's going to work as well. Same way. If I click on the paragraph, gone, click on the span, gone, click in between, nothing's happening. Okay, and so that's the difference between remove and remove child and a few different ways you can implement them, including with optional chaining. All right, so the link to the optional chaining video is down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those down below. And as always, thanks for watching.